Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kilowatt. My name is Bodie, and I am your host. And as you can t probably tell by my voice, I am still sick. And uh, not only that, uh, work has been very busy. I've been putting in some overtime, not a lot as compared to the, the folks, other folks that I work with, but a lot for me. And as a result, I have not, I am very tired. Um, we've been up a lot at nighttime, uh, and it is, it is kicking my butt for sure. Um, as a result, I'm operating at about 10% of my normal brain capacity, which is usually quite low. So I'm just letting you know that before uh, we get too far into this, because, you know, you can just you can just walk away right now and I won't be mad. Uh, a couple of quick announcements here. First of all, we do have some people in the house that are working on a bathroom that had a water leak uh, at the beginning of November. They're finally getting around to fixing uh, the drywall and stuff. So if you hear banging or talking, that's what that is. And then because my brain isn't uh, working at full capacity, uh, this week we're only going to cover the week's Tesla news on today's episode. On Tuesday, I'm going to cover all of the other EV news. It's just, it was really hard to get the show notes done. It took me two days to uh, even produce what you're going to hear today. And that was two days of actual like sitting in front of the computer trying to get it figured out. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make this a much smaller episode, much less stressful to produce, hopefully more fun to listen to and more informational to you. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the news. Elon Musk confirmed that the Tesla Semi has an efficiency of 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile. At the Tesla Semi delivery event, they showed a time-lapse video of a Tesla Semi traveling 500 miles from Northern California to Southern California. So based on that information, we know that that Tesla Semi started at 97% battery, and when it finished its 500 miles of travel, it had 4% left over. So based off that information, we are looking at a battery pack for that Tesla Semi between 850 and 900 kilowatt hours. So now we know the approximate size of the battery pack, which is awesome. Now we're waiting to hear about the actual official price, which they still haven't announced yet, and what autonomous driving features will the Tesla Semi come with? And if it does come with full self-driving, do, do, when you pay, you know, God only knows how much for this vehicle, do you get that for free or do you have to pay more money on top of that? Honestly, I think it's weird that we don't know the price of these vehicles. <laughs> If they're delivering them, we should probably have an idea of what Pepsi paid for each of these. Just saying. We're hearing reports that Model 3 is set for a refreshed. This is based on rumors that are swirling around. Filings Tesla has made with the city of Fremont to make changes to General Assembly 3, which is where they build their Model 3s or one of the lines they build the Model 3 on. And uh, the final reason why this rumor or report might be true is because you know the car's pretty much been the same car since 2017 with some minor changes here and there like in 2020 we got black door handles and a heat pump that kind of thing and then in san jose someone saw a model 3 that was all camouflaged up to to hide all the new bits and pieces so i give this rumor some credibility and because I don't know how to transition to this next story, we are going to transition awkwardly. Tesla has officially launched the Model 3 and Model Y in Thailand. Pricing for the vehicles is comparable to here in the United States. The Model 3 starts at 1,759,000 Thai baht, which is roughly 50,000 US dollars. The Model Y starts at 1,959,000 Thai baht which is right around 58,000 US dollars. Now for the bummer part of the news, while you can order a Tesla in Thailand, there's no word on when deliveries will begin. According to Wired, Giga Berlin is having some issues filling positions at the plant. Employees are leaving shortly after being hired. They're also calling out sick more often than they're, than they're at work, according to one employee that spoke with Wired via Electric. That employee claims that people are unmotivated. 
According to Electric, Giga Berlin has around 7,500 employees and 400 open positions. I have no idea if any of this is true, but I will keep you posted. While I was reading this, I was wondering, is this one of those situations where a company culture like Tesla's company culture doesn't necessarily match the values and culture of the town or surrounding area that their gigafactory happens to be in? Is just this just kind of a miscommunication between the company and the employees, which is causing a, um, a kind of like a malaise throughout the factory. Now, again, we don't know if any of this is true. Tell me what you think. Bodie, B-O-D-I-E at 918digital.com. Tesla stopped installing radar in the Model 3 and the Model Y in 2021 and the Model S and X earlier this year. And in October of 2022, they removed the ultrasonic sensors. According to recent filings to the FCC, that's the Federal Communications Commission, if you don't live in the United States, Tesla is requesting approval for a new vehicle radar. The radars are set to debut in January of 2023, but Tesla has requested a short-term confidentiality extension with the FCC. It's common for the FCC to grant six months of confidentiality so as not to tip off the world what a, pro a company is working on. But Tesla has extended that with the hopes to debut something in January of 2023. That's really all we know. Uh, it's interesting that Tesla would bring radar back <laughs> to their vehicles after saying that Tesla Vision uh, was the way to go. My question to you is, what do you think they're going to use the radar for? Is this going to be something that they release with hardware for and Cybertruck? Is this something that they have they are using in the Tesla Semi, which is a thought that I just had, and I don't know why I didn't have that before. Is this something they're going to use with the Tesla Semi? Because we don't know anything about the ADAS system, the Advanced Driver Automatic Assist System. I might have got that confused in the A's, but anyway. Or will we see it in the new Model 3 refresh? Like, I have so many questions. I don't, I, I don't have any answers for you, but I have a lot of questions. I guess we'll find out next month. I will certainly keep an eye on it for you. And now we're down to our final story of the week. Tesla is being sued over self-driving claims. The class action lawsuit claims that Elon and Tesla misled customers and that the vehicles were not capable or are not capable of the features that were promised to them. Shortly after I started this podcast in 2016, Elon showed off hardware two in the Model S and claimed that it had level five full self-driving capabilities. Now that was in 2016. Since 2016, we've had hardware 2.5 because hardware two didn't work out and hardware three. And soon, very soon, we'll have hardware four. Uh, we still don't have full self-driving, but Elon has, has beat this drum over and over and over again, almost at every event, definitely on every earnings call that he's on. He's like, we're right around the corner. We're, we're close to solving these things. And, you know, by the end of the year, we'll have it solved. And then we're just waiting for regulatory approval. This is something that he says all of the time. And folks who listen to this podcast for any length of time should know this because I always make sure to highlight it because to this point, we haven't gotten there yet. And I believed Elon back in 2016, not knowing any better. And it's not knowing any better because I think Elon and Tesla are like purposely deceiving us because I don't think that's the case, not knowing any better in that I didn't understand how autonomous driving worked and how hard it was to actually accomplish it. So now we go back to the lawsuit. All of these people are, are claiming that they were sold an idea, which is the full self-driving level five, full self-driving, and that hasn't come to fruition. There are people like Mel Herbert of the Talking Tesla podcast who have bought several Teslas with full self-driving in the time that Elon announced it with hardware two to all the way up until a few months ago. I think he bought a Model Y. It's been a while since I've listened to their podcast, but he still doesn't have that level of autonomy that Elon promised with hardware too. And he's paid several times for this, this product over the years, over the last six years. 
Tesla has filed a motion for dismissal of this case, and their defense in this is mere failure to realize a long-term aspirational goal is not fraud. And I would agree with them. I would agree with them 100%. Uh, however, actually, I'm not going to however this. I'm going to say, I'm going to play you some clips from that 2016 event where Tesla announced hardware two. And I want you at the end of it, I want you to email me Bodie at 918digital.com and tell me what you think, because I have very strong opinions on this and I've definitely communicated those opinions on this podcast, but I want you to listen to these clips. Another thing I have to say is that I had, I didn't want to play the whole 26 minute or whatever presentation. So I only pick the clips that I thought were relevant. And if you want to listen to the whole presentation, there's a link in the show notes so that you can listen to the whole presentation and decide for yourself. All right, let's jump into our first clip where Elon actually introduces hardware 2.0. The, the basic news is that uh, all Tesla vehicles exiting the factory have the hardware necessary for level five autonomy. Uh, so that's in terms of the, the, the cameras and compute power, uh, it's um, it, every car we make, so on, on the order of 2,000 cars a week, uh, are shipping now with uh, level five, meaning hardware capable of, of full self-driving or driverless uh, capability. Um, so it, it'll take us uh, some time, uh, you know, into the future to, to complete validation of the software uh, and, uh, and and obviously get the required regulatory approval. But the important thing is that the foundation um, is laid for the cars to be fully autonomous uh, at a safety level we believe to be at, at least twice that of a person, maybe may be better. Um, so uh, I think that's probably unexpected by most that it's happening right now. Um, so yeah, we're, so we're pretty excited about that. And that that's also essentially part two of the Model 3 announcement, which is that Model 3 um, will also have the hardware necessary for full autonomy. Uh, in fact, all, all cars that Tesla makes from here on out will have, um, have the hardware needed to be fully autonomous or, or driverless. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's where things are. And, and the uh, this is all Tesla Vision uh, software, so uh, we, we, we're not uh, we're not using uh, any any third party software or uh, anything for for the uh, vision processing. This is a Tesla developed uh, neural net, um, and uh, yeah, uh, although it's somewhat hard, hardware independent, um, it could be we could actually run this on. Um, uh, NVIDIA, AMD, or, or Intel. Uh, we, we did we did pick in the NVIDIA uh, Titan uh, GPU as the, the as the main um, chip for the, the neural net, um, but it was it was a pretty tight tight uh, call between particularly between AMD and uh, NVIDIA. Uh, but ultimately, we put NVIDIA had the the, the better uh, better hardware. Um, so that, that's kind of where. That, 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 that's, I think, pretty, pretty huge news. All right. So that's how Elon starts this uh, announcement off. Um, you know, there, there wasn't big uh, fanfare like there is today. Like this was basically, it wasn't an earnings call, but it was kind of done in the same way that an earnings call is done. So he starts off like, okay, here's the news. Boom. He gives us the news. In that first sentence, you know, he basically says that all Tesla's starting, you know, in October, 2016 are capable of level five autonomy. Moving on to our second clip, Elon's going to talk about how irresponsible it is for the media to be reporting negatively on autopilot crashes. Um, I left this in here for my own personal reason, <laughs> but go ahead and listen. And then we'll talk about it when we get back. I mean, one of the things I, one of the things I should mention that frankly has been, um, Quite, quite disturbing to me is the degree of media coverage of autopilot uh, crashes, which are basically almost none, uh, relative to the paucity of media coverage of the 1.2 million people that die every year in manual crashes is something that I think uh, does not reflect well upon the media. It really doesn't. Um, 
because and, and, and really you need to think carefully about this because if in writing some article that's negative, you effectively dissuade people from using an autonomous vehicle, you're killing people. Next question. You hear how fired up he got with that uh, statement? This is why, this is one of the reasons why I really liked Elon, because I was like, man, this guy really cares about people who drive their vehicles. He cares about humanity, right? And I, and I don't think that he doesn't care now, by the way, but this is the one of the things that I identified with when I first started covering Elon and Tesla. Um, because I would get mad too, right? If I thought that uh, the media was doing something that was counterproductive to people's safety, then I would be upset by it. Now that I have a few years um, doing this podcast, my general feeling is, is if you feel that strongly, why are you charging $15,000 for full self-driving? If you feel like it's saving lives, because he did, he did talk about an autopilot in that clip, but then he said full autonomy, dissuading people from using full autonomy. If you think full autonomy is that beneficial to humankind, and if you think it's that beneficial to people's safety, why are you charging such a high premium? I don't think you should charge nothing for it, but why are you charging $15,000? The take rate, according to Troy Teslike, who, who did a little survey, the take rate for um, full self-driving is one in seven Tesla buyers pop for full self-driving. And this was done before Tesla moved the price to $15,000. So I don't know what it would be now, but the last time Troy Tesla did a survey, it was one in seven. Uh, that number used to be closer to 50% in the early days with people who bought Teslas. So I'm sure that it's less now that the price is $15,000. So my question to Elon would be is if this is so important to you, why are you charging so much money for it? Like the hardware is already in the vehicle. People aren't buying new hardware. They've already paid for the hardware. Why does it cost $15,000 to turn on the software package? And that's it. I have a genuine question about that. Not that I think Elon and Tesla should give it away for free. I just don't think it should be such a high premium. Our next clip, Elon's going to talk about feature rollout. Let's listen into that. Hey, good evening. Uh, I was wondering, Elon, if you could just spell out how you see this rollout of autonomous features happening once these cars start to become enabled. Um, the press release says that new features will become available bit by bit. How do you see that? Are, are we going to see full city driving straight away or a more limited feature set? Yeah, so since this is a, a, a new platform, um, although we've, we've been spending, you know, we've spent um, more than a year um, in, in testing, the, uh, the, 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 the feature set initially will be, will, will be disabled, at least for the first few months. The, uh, the, the hardware, to, the cars with hardware 2, what we call hardware 2, um, which, which is sort of the full autonomy suite, will actually have fewer features than cars with hardware 1. Um, so we expect to to reach feature parity uh, following um, uh, field validation of the of hardware to probably in December, so maybe two or three months from now. Um, so for the next two or three months, actually, a hardware one car will be better than a hardware two car. Uh, and then um, every approximately every two or three months thereafter is when we expect to er release uh, significant improvements in autonomous capability. Um, uh, and our, I, I, our goal is, I feel pretty good about this goal, is that um, we'll be able to do a, demonstra a demonstration drive of full autonomy all the way from LA to New York. So basically from uh, a home in LA to, let's say, dropping you off in in Times Square in New York, and having the car go and park itself uh, by the end of next year, without 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 the need for a single um, touch, including the charger. Um, what is happening to autopilot in the in the vehicles with the new hardware? Could you speak specifically to that? Uh, what is happening to autopilot in the vehicles with the new hardware? Um, well, the, uh, the, the 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 new hardware. Is, is what will enable self-driving, which is different from autopilot. Um, you know, autopilot is a term that's been in use for more than half a century um, as 
as an, as an assistant, uh, a flying assistant in, in aircraft for pilots. Um, that's why we chose to use it. Um, it does not represent self-driving uh, any more than autopilot aircraft makes an aircraft self-flying. So I'm just trying to understand. So the autopilot, which has been associated with your advanced assistant driver assistance technology here, you know, up until now, is, are, is that what what happens to that system? What happens to that 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 name, if you will, as you go forward with this new hardware? It's just not clear from the release, and um, I just want to understand how you're handling that. Yeah, there's um, it, basically that the, there'll be two. Of, I mean, we're, we're, there'll, there'll be two options for uh, buying a, our car. Um, what, one is what we call enhanced autopilot, uh, which is kind of quite similar to what the the autopilot that we that we had been offering, except that it's got redundant forward cameras, um, and it has uh, a, a left rear camera and a right rear camera, um, as well as uh, a significantly improved um, ultrasonic sonar and uh, and, and, and much more computing power. Um, the, the net effect of enhanced autopilot is you should be able to go from freeway on-ramp to exit as well as transitioning to, between multiple freeways um, and passing and maneuvering around other cars without touching anything with enhanced autopilot. Um, the, then there's uh, sort of the full self-driving capability uh, which will take care of the much more complex uh, situations uh, in in urban uh, environments, um, and so there'll be two two options that people can can, can pick in, in buying the car. Um, either basically a an, an improved version of autopilot or um, full self driving. So one, one's kind of four cameras, the other's eight cameras. Um, yeah, that's that's sort of what will happen now. now the hardware one autopilot vehicles will continue to improve um, with improved software with, with as the fleet learning as we accumulate more miles um, it will it will continue to to get better and better um, with it but but it it will it is limited by the the fundamental hardware that's on on the uh, the hardware one cars uh, in that there's only one Ford camera uh, there, there are ultrasonics but they have half the range and resolution um, it has the, has the, the radar. Um, and so there's, with, within the context of, of that sensor suite, uh, the hardware one cars will, will continue, can continue to, to get better over time. And that's 100% true. Uh, the hardware one cars were better for a short period of time, and then hardware two cars just kind of blew them out of the water. Um, and that's happened every time Tesla's done something, like when they moved the radars, they took away some features and then added them back in over time. I don't know if they did that with the ultrasonic, ultrasonic, ultrasonic sensors or not. Um, I can't remember. If you know, let me know. Bodhi at 918digital.com. And then another thing that he talked about and we're still waiting on is that coast-to-coast -coast trip from uh, the West Coast to the East Coast without uh, needing any human interventions, which it also includes charging. So... Yeah, interesting, interesting, hasn't happened yet. All right, uh, let's go ahead and jump into our final clip here. Are, are, you, are you talking about the new Hardware 2 being level four or level five? And um, just to be clear on Hardware 1, um, is there going to be any disabling of that technology at this point or does it continue to run as is? Thank you. Um, it's, it, it would be, the hardware two is, is capable of level five autonomy. In other words, it's capable. The hardware is capable of the highest level of autonomy. Uh, and, and and level and and hardware one, um, I think will we'll continue to improve. Um, you know, as as we improve the the, the software that operates the car. Um, I mean, already with 7.0, it was unequivocally safer than um, than. Um, you know, that than, than manually driven cars, uh, and with ADO, that has improved even more. Uh, so uh, it, it would obviously be crazy to turn off something that is preventing accidents. All right, there you have it. There are the four clips that I present to you. If you want to listen to the whole thing, I put the link in the show notes. It's actually really interesting. Um, based on those four clips, though, I want you to email me, Bodie at 918digital.com, and tell me, do you think that... 
Tesla is responsible for misleading customers on what full self-driving was capable of. Because yes, technically full self-driving was in beta when they sold it, and it's not out of beta yet. However, I feel like you get a year, maybe two, possibly three years to solve that problem before you start maybe tipping onto the edge of misrepresenting what the technology is capable of. Because I fully believe in 2016, Elon and the rest of the team thought they could get to level five autonomy with hardware too. That doesn't change the fact that people actually spent money, in some cases a lot of money, on a promise that never became a feature, you know, um, it's only part of a feature at this point. It's a really good, it's a really good product, full self-driving. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but is it good enough to, to save Tesla from this class action lawsuit? As I am not a lawyer and often get law things wrong, I'm going to say probably not, but I don't know for sure. Let me know what you think. All right. Oh, you know what? It is the new, it's a new, it's a new month. We need to thank our patrons. So let's go ahead and thank Bruce C., Stephen, Bruce W., Andrew, Matthew, Jerbo, Jeffrey, Alex, Joseph, Friendly Sleet 66, Steve, James, Isaiah, Anthony, Elon Muskie, Jessica Kirsch, youtube.com forward slash Jessica Kirsch, Chris, Howard, Rolando, Karen, Ryan, Tommaso, Chip, Sierra, Alan, Don, Cameron, Dale, Mark, Nate, and Christopher. Did I say Steve? If I didn't say Steve, I'm going to add Steve in there. I don't think I said it. I think I skipped from Friendly Sleet to James. Hi, Steve. And one more thing before I let you go, and I can't believe I was about to forget this. Chris Ashley was on our show with Allison Sheridan of the Podfeet Network. You can go see Allison's stuff at podfeet.com. Anyway, Chris was on the show and he was talking about his F-150 Lightning. This was this summer. Chris actually got his vehicle and within a few hours, I believe it was, it might've been the next day, but I think it might've been that same night that Chris got a show. He came on the, the show and he talked to us about uh, his kind of like the journey that he went through to get the F-150 Lightning. Uh, and his initial thoughts of the vehicle. It was a really fun conversation. After Chris got his F-150 Lightning, he went through kind of an amazing couple of months. Um, there was some stuff with installing a charger at his home, and I won't get into that whole saga here. You can listen to it on his SMR podcast. If you go back into the summer and listen to any of those episodes, you'll hear about it. He was uh, written up in Wired Magazine, and today, Saturday uh, the 10th of uh, December, he was on CBS Saturday morning showing off his F-150 Lightning and just kind of going into why he decided to purchase an electric vehicle. So I'm going to make sure to put a link to Chris's segment in the show notes, and I want everybody to please go and, and watch it. And then I'm going to put Chris's Twitter handle in the show notes, and I want you to please go and and tweet at Chris and show him some love because he's a good dude and he deserves it. So that is it for me this week. Um, eh, you know what? I forgot to do a Patreon plug, but I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, go to patreon.com forward slash kilowatt if you want to support the show. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, this Show prep started on Wednesday and it's ending on Saturday at 4.30 um, in the afternoon. I, I don't know why it took me so long to put this show together. It was really hard. Hopefully Tuesday's show will go much smoother than today's show. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope you have a great week and I will talk to you on Tuesday. 